I was making some measurements and I noticed uh, a problem and I tracked it down to my 50 ohms. Um, and now that I have a, a VNA, I thought, well, let me measure them. Uh, maybe they're not all the same. And I found some really interesting things. So uh, I have a whole bunch of different types of 50 ohm things. I have 50 ohm feed throughs for like use on oscilloscopes. Uh, I have some 50 ohm terminations that I've saved off of test equipment. A lot of test equipment, you have to plug up ports with 50 ohms, and so these kind of came off of things like that. And then I have some other ones that I just kind of have. <laughs> and I don't know where they came from, but I just have them. Well, I know where some of them came from. Uh, I, did, I did purchase this one, and I did purchase this one, so I know where those came from. And I did purchase these, so I don't know where those came from. Okay, so I lied. Um, so this one is just my really expensive, uh, I didn't pay a lot of money for it, but it's real expensive uh, uh, 50 ohm calibration, good up to 20 gigahertz, maybe farther. Uh, I forget who makes these uh, inmet. Yeah, this is like really, really, really top end uh, 50 ohm load for, for um, uh, SMA. And I put it on a, a BNC adapter just to, so we have a reference. Um, so... Let's take a look at these on the VNA, okay? So we're going to be taking a look to see if they really are 50 ohms. So the the way to the way to really do that is take a look at the Smith chart. If you're in the center of the Smith chart, then uh, uh, then everything is hunky dory. Uh, don't know where that expression came from. Anyway, uh, so we're going to have to change our BNC or um, SMA here to a BNC. So I'm going to use this adapter. This is the best adapter I have. So we'll put a good put put a good one in. Um, now the problem with putting in a adapter is you're going to get a phase change, right? You've calibrated at the port, but now you've added electrical length, and so uh, the uh, let me move way out here. The cursor moves kind of slow on these things, doesn't it? Okay, so that's the end of the sweep. That's it. That's at one gigahertz, right? So uh, the electrical link gets uh, phase, this is phase shift, right? Which is also electrical length, and it's dependent on the frequency you're using it. So more and more uh, cycles of your or portions of your cycle uh, will fit within that little short little length. And instead of being here, we're now over here. We could cal at a new uh, distance. And then that point would go back to the zero. You get to tell the VNA where zero length is. And um, I don't have any good Cal standards uh, out here, but what I can do is I can tell the VNA, uh, I know that I calibrated here, but please consider here is my new calibration point, okay? And we can do that. Um, we can do that with, oh gosh, now I'm gonna forget where it is display scale. Yeah, so you go in display scale and it's a scale per division. That's what we used a lot, but you can change the electrical delay. So you click on electrical delay and then you can put in a number. And uh, I know this length is around 260 picoseconds. And so whoop, puts it right back. Okay, now how did I know it was 250 picoseconds? Um, uh, 260 picoseconds. Well, I turned on the, um, trace, trace zero. Okay. We're going to go to trace zero and then we're going to say format and I'm going to say delay. So now this is, uh, uh, displaying electrical delay and I have my mark over here to gigahertz and I can read it right off of here. Oh, well, now that I've called it out, sorry. So let's go back to, gosh, where were we? Go back to um, display, scale, electrical delay. Let's set that back to zero. Okay, and then this is now our electrical delay. It measures uh, along here. It measures it in, in uh, seconds now so from from zero to how many seconds and you can read it right up here and it's saying about 
it's bouncing around, but around around 300 picoseconds it's bouncing around. Um, so that's how I got the number, all right? So now we can turn off trace zero. We can go back to uh, display, scale, electrical delay. We'll put in that 260 picoseconds. And that's a nice zero. We'll just leave it there, okay? So now we're all set up to put in uh, uh, items on the uh, on the BNC. So let's put in one. Um, let me put in the one that I've been using a lot, which is the little SMA with an adapter. Okay, so we'll stick that on there. And you can see that it's measuring very nice. It's right there in the uh, right there in the center. All right. So that one works good, even with a, a cheap Chinese adapter on it. It's it's working good. All right. All right, let's try, let's try another one. Okay, I've got a bunch of these. Uh, these are just uh, things, and I've put a number 50 on them. I know that they're 50 ohms. And so let me put one of those on there. And whoa, uh, it has uh, some problems at higher frequencies. Okay, so at low frequencies, it's 50 ohms, but at high frequencies, it's not. So let's turn on another trace. Let's put our uh, put our log mag back on. Okay, so as an RF person, uh, I like to think of return loss instead of v VSWR, and 20 dB of return loss is like return loss of a, 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 VNA, a, a VSWR of about 1.2 to 1. And so anything that's um, anything that's 20 Minus 20, return loss, and that's going to happen right there where it crosses the second line, okay? So we're looking at the yellow line, and right there is, is where it's, it's a 20 dB loss. The um, losses in SWRs are concentric circles around the center of the Smith chart, okay? I think I've covered that before, but they're increasing concentric circles but we can use this chart. So we can operate up to about 310 megahertz uh, with this particular load, and then it's not as nice, okay? I mean, it's usable, but it's just not as nice. Okay, so about 300, 300 uh, megahertz for that one. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, this one has a kind of a long, long thing on it. You can kind of imagine that there's a, that there's a resistor stuck in there. Let's take a look at that. And it also is about the same. Uh, it's right at about, uh, this one's slightly better. This one's around 340 megahertz before it. It's no good. All right, so those are kind of all the same. All right, so let's measure some of these, um, some of these 50 ohm uh, terminations you might get for your oscilloscope. This one says load resistor 50 ohms, a P57. Uh, so anyway, let's put that on there, see what that looks like. And uh, it actually is much better. Let's see here. So let's go to where it's 20 dB. And it's around up here. So it's operating well to about 700 megahertz. Well, that's interesting. And uh, Here's another one that's not marked, so I put a label on it. It's a 50 ohm termination. This is a cheap Chinese one. Uh, you know, this is like a, a $2 thing. Um, and so it's not as good. Uh, it's good to about 400 megahertz. Not bad. And let's see here. All right, so this is the one I use a lot. This is the, I've got a couple of these. These are HP. There's actually a part number on these, I think. Yeah, this is a 10100C. C, huh, interesting. Anyway, this one says 50 ohm feed through termination DC to 300 megahertz. So it's marked directly. Uh, VSWR max is 1.1 and it's Swiss made, made in Switzerland. Hope my Swiss viewers are out there listening. People were commenting on uh, Swiss connectors. Um, 
Hoopler connectors. Um, and so let's take a look at this one. Oh, it's much better than, uh, I would call it much better than 300 megahertz. I would call it uh, 890 megahertz, so it's uh, very nice. You can see the Smith chart here is very, very small. So, yeah, high quality. So I'm saying uh, SWR about 1.2. They said SWR 1.1, so they're being a little more critical about how good of a match you need. So they only specify it to 300 megahertz, but I say it's it's great, almost up to a gigahertz. It looks fine. All right, so that leads us to these last ones, which uh, were kind of the surprise for me. Um, these little guys here. Uh, let me get back in focus. Uh, this one I bought recently because I had something I wanted a very, very short connector for. These are a little bit longer, so I wanted a real short one. And I paid $1.70, no, $1.97, I think, for this. This I just found in my junk bin just today. I didn't even know I had it. And then this one, I was just looking around for things. I thought it was, I thought it was one of these, but it, 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 it seems to be a bit different. It's a little bit longer. And I was very, very shocked when I put them on the uh, put them on the VNA. So let's go back to the uh, VNA, get back in focus. All right. So here's the one that I just re recently purchased. This little shorty, and uh, bang, <laughs> yowza! This thing is perfect. I mean, it is perfect. You know, within one pixel of being 50 ohms and. Uh, its worst return loss is minus 32. And this thing is just golden, right? And for a buck 97, I went back and I ordered five more. <laughs> um, it is amazing. Uh, see if, if, see if, so they're used, and I'm hoping that the pile he has are all the same make. He might give me other ones that aren't as nice as this one, so I'm kind of taking a gamble on the next five, but this one is just golden, okay? So the next one, uh, this one, like I said, I just found this in my bin today, and it actually has a little label on it. This one also is marked HP, um, and it has a part number. Oh uh, gosh, can I read it? No, it's kind of buggered up. 11652-600001. Anyway, uh, put that on here, and yowza. It's even well. It's about the same. I'd say it's. A, I, I say it's the same. I said these are these two maybe were made by the same company. Anyway, it's really really good too. So I'm gonna definitely save those two for calibration use. And then this last one, which I don't know where it came from or vintage or. Uh, oh, it is marked. It's a Kings uh, Kings connector. So I'm a real big fan of uh, Kings, and uh, they are here in uh, California. We'll put the kings on here and bang, it's perfect too. So I've got three that are really, really good. Now I was in the past using using these things to do cal uh, 50 ohm calibrations on, and and uh, yeah, they're not they're not all that nice. So definitely, there's a difference between 50 ohm loads that are kind of used in audio land, maybe up to a megahertz, things like that. Um, and I kind of forgot about that. Uh, but even the even the cheap ones seem to be operating up to around three four hundred uh, three or four hundred megahertz. So even up into uh, VHS uh, VHF uh, regions, they're still pretty good. UHF they're falling apart. Definitely not definitely not into gigahertz. But uh, I was also impressed with the uh, 50 ohm loads for the oscilloscope. I uh, didn't think they were going to be very good because they were marked 300. But uh, oh my gosh, uh, they're uh, they're pretty good up to a gig. I mean, I don't, I, I have no problem using this one up to a gigahertz. So yeah, there you go. 50 ohms is always 50 ohms, except when it's not.